This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. Today it's really a, a privilege and pleasure to talk to you about ultraviolet light, the original source, and how to use it. Now I'd like to uh, uh, talk about the uh, human photoprotective response, some of the uh, um, adaptations in our skin that have evolved to use vitamin, or use ultraviolet B for vitamin D photosynthesis, and yet uh, protect ourselves from UVA. This is uh, the situation in unexposed, light-colored skin. There's the melanocyte, keratinocytes. These are little melanin packets. And here's the basal layer, the, the uh, stratum corneum, the, the horny layer, sometimes called spinosum. And let's uh, see what happens when I press this button. Here's the UVA. Notice how in unaccommodated skin, the UVA goes very deeply into the skin. It's, it's powerful. You can transilluminate your, your, your cheek with a flashlight. I don't know if you ever did that when you were a kid. You, you, uh, but um, it, UVA is like that. It can go way down in deep into the skin. And it hits the melanocytes, there's no question about it, where it causes a lot of oxidative damage. It used to be thought that UVB was the culprit in malignant melanoma. UVA can reach the melanocytes and makes a lot of uh, photooxidative products that can be very damaging. Here's a, our favorite UVB photons coming down. And, and uh, these photons are the ones that initiate the human photoprotective response. These are all the, also the photons that are completely blocked by chemical sunscreens. So chemical sunscreens you know, block uh, tanning, obviously, and, and sunburn. But they also block the human photoprotective response. So let's see. Here's, here's what happens in response to the UVB. The stratum corneum thickens. And also, the melanocytes are stimulated to make more melanin. This is the uh, pheomelanin, the, the dark melanin that uh, is so effective in protecting the skin. There's also a eumelanin, the kind of reddish melanin that's a little less effective. Uh, and now we see that the, uh, here's the melanin that's been uh, induced by the UVB. And it's blocking the UVA and uh, attenuating the UVB. But the vitamin D photosynthesis can still occur in the upper layers of the skin here. So it's, uh, uh, this is a response to UVB that protects the skin from UVA that's completely obviated by the application of UVA blocking sunscreens. Now within, this is sort of a close-up view of of the keratinocytes. Within the keratinocytes, there, there's a, a migration of, of the melanin as well. And they go to the apex of the nucleus in the distal region and protect the nucleus. So it's a very interesting adaptation. And uh, it's uh, illustrated here in this uh, cartoon. <clears throat> well, here's a ball of sunscreen. This is uh, for, for children. Uh, it's a 45 SPF. You're supposed to put it on often because the kid might go swimming. And, and be sure to, you know, reapply frequently. And, and um, you know, I think we have to look at whether this is a good idea. Now, this little girl's been around for about 50 years. I don't know if you remember. Uh, people think sunscreen's a recent invention, but uh, she's, she's been, been around for a while. So, um, you know, I, I think we have to decide whether we like this or not. And <clears throat> well, this is, uh, these are the dates of introduction of, of suntan lotions and sunscreens. Now they're called sunblocks, which is, uh, a sunscreen is at least a little more descriptive because the sunscreens have huge holes in them. The sunblock, it's, it, it's, it's really not a sunblock, as you'll see. Here's the um, homosalate and the famous paraminobenzoic acid. 
that were introduced in the late 40s. At, those, at that time, they were called suntan lotions. They helped you get a tan. Then they became sunscreens and later sunblocks. Okay, well, here's a pop, a really popularized. We're getting up to SPF 6 or 8 now. Whoa, okay. Now we're up to 20, and these are the higher erythema blocks. And then I wanted to transpose this over age-adjusted malignant melanoma rates. Well, you know, uh, uh, there's a temporal sequence here. It's a, it could be coincidence. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to show the ultraviolet B uh, range here, the terrestrial range. And this is the absorption spectrum of PABA. And it really wipes it out, uh, as you can see. Uh, PABA is a pretty good, it's a bacterial vitamin, and it's good at blocking UVC, and it blocks uh, UVB, but nothing in the UVA. It's transparent to the UVA. So it maintains the skin in this very transparent state by blocking human photoprotective response that I showed, and, and allows uh, the UVA to, uh, tr to uh, penetrate this unaccommodated skin. It also allows thousands of times the exposure to UVA. So, uh, because normally a person would get a sunburn after half an hour, but if they're, take, if they're wearing 45, they can stay out 45 times as long. That's really what that, that number means. So it's, uh, you know, dermatologists say, well, don't go out in the sun, but if you go out, wear this. It'll let you stay out 45 times longer. Well, does that make sense? Uh, I think we have to reevaluate re sunscreens. It, it, and, uh, They've, they've never been shown in a randomized controlled trial to prevent malignant melanoma. I think if sunscreens were a pill that you swallowed, maybe the FDA would have paid more attention to them, but since they're just rubbed on the integument, they're considered a cosmetic. But they have this very powerful effect. They've irrevocably changed a relationship, a very ancient relationship between our skin and the sun. And it's one that, it's, an, it's a relationship that has evolved over millennia. So I, we should be very careful about putting these powerful chemicals on our skin, untested powerful chemicals. Well, our, um, <clears throat> a lot of people have been looking at sunscreen use. I mentioned that there's never been a con clinical trial showing that sunscreens are effective in preventing melanoma. But what we see here is that um, <clears throat> a series of case control studies, and these are organized by their magnitude here. These, these were somewhat protective. They found a protective association between sunscreen use and risk of melanoma, case control studies. These were neutral, one, same risk in the cases of the controls. And these people who used a sunscreen had higher risk of melanoma. Well, people organize these sometimes by the year they were done or sometimes by the, they alphabetize them by the author's last name. But our, our group thought, well, there's seven of them that are elevated, five that aren't statistically significant, and four where there was a protective effect. What if we looked at that by latitude? And so we did that, and interestingly enough, in high latitude, fair-skinned populations, the sunscreens tended to be very uh, risky. <laughs> the use of sunscreen was associated with increased risk. And, as you, and in fact, when you pool, it, it's 40% uh, higher. Now, if you looked at the uh, uh, lower latitude, Spain, and well, here, here we're seeing a southern hemisphere. Uh, populations that generally tend to be more heavily pigmented, we see a, a nil or somewhat protective effect. And it's, um, it's a very interesting finding because the people who are most vulnerable to m melanoma tend to be fair skinned. They burn easily and they might rely more on on heavy use of chemical sunscreens. So they're really precisely the people who probably shouldn't be using them. And you can explain quite a lot of the variation in these odds ratios just by knowing the latitude, 35% of the variation. That's <clears throat> now here's a, the, here are the data from the uh, Connecticut Tumor Registry for Malignant Melanoma in the United States. And it's um, a, a very uh, rapidly increasing epidemic in our in our country, the Connecticut Tumor Registry is one of the oldest tumor registries in the United States. I think the point's been made that correlation isn't causation, but of course there's no causation without correlation. And these are annual sunscreen sales, millions of dollars. 
And, you know, it's, a, it's potentially a coincidence. The price of peanut butter, uh, gasoline, you know, maybe there are other things, but this is pretty interesting. But uh, if, you, if you do uh, need to use a, a, a tanning lamp, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's a reasonable approach if you live in Wasilla, Alaska, for example. Uh, you, you, you should seek out a, a UVB tanning lamp, uh, and, uh, or, or one that's very similar to the ultraviolet emissions of, of the sun. And don't rely on UVA. There, are, there is such thing as a UVA tan. It's a very strange tan. It takes the mel melanin, melanin that's in your skin and oxidizes it so that it gets a little darker. But it doesn't induce formation of new melanin. Uh, 